Okay, so we've had to keep this secret for a really long time, which has been quite difficult, but uh, immediately following the release of the real-life shooter level one, we actually had a game studio get in touch, and they said, we've seen the video, we loved it, we'd like to know if there's a way that this idea could fit in the world of our game. So we thought about it for all of about 10 minutes before calling them straight back and saying, hells yes, there's a way, um, let's do it. The name of the game studio was IO Interactive in Denmark, the name of the game was Hitman. So now we've got the whole crew back together again. We're here in Old Way Mansion in Devon, and we're about to make the real life Hitman experience. Good luck, you have one hour. We knew that in order to do justice to the Hitman games, we were gonna to have to change things up quite dramatically. Level one and level two were first person, so we had the, the GoPro there mounted to the helmet. With this, it was gonna to have to be third person. We were gonna to have to work out a camera stabilizer system that would follow the actor around. But that kind of stuff's easy. The more difficult stuff is really kind of getting into the meat of it. You know, the actual gameplay, style, and narrative structure of the thing. So the first thing we did was we built a 3D model of the location inside a games engine so that we could run around and really start designing that level. Level one and level two were quite linear, so you would always start in the same place, you'd always effectively end in the same place, and there were a certain set number of gags that you'd have to work through to get there. But with Hitman, that, that was just never going to work. In order to honour the games, we were going to have to let them find five different ways into the building and ten different ways to approach the target and all sorts of different costumes and weapons and, and techniques and approaches that they could take. We had builders you could put on their overalls and their cap and pick up a paint roller. We had security guards where you could kind of zip up their jacket and pull their woolen hat on and walk around like a security guard. We also had Rupert, our butler, follow him into his room, smash him over the head with a bottle, take his clothes and pose as the butler. Owing to the nature of the Hitman games, we knew that people would be trying anything to try and eliminate the target or anybody that gets in their way. So everything from fire alarms to bottles to hammers to wrenches to uh, this lovely statue was replaced with foam props. A couple of players even tried to push her over and take out the target that way. So in order to be able to push the envelope a little bit further on this one, we wanted to control the connection at both ends, which meant building a game site for the players to come into and connect to us here at the mansion. That gave us an opportunity to actually fill that space with some more tactile props that people could interact with during the gameplay. We started out just with a briefcase. It would have a dossier inside with details of the contract. We also gave them the maps. We also thought, wouldn't it be cool if they had a desk phone there that we could call them up and kind of give them the intro to the mission vocally over the phone. Our target, a particularly nasty Serbian arms dealer. Find the target and eliminate him without being detected. We kept thinking, like, wouldn't it be great if there was a way that people could be a little bit more involved, rather than just being the handler saying, OK, 47, take him down. What if they could somehow pull the trigger? And so we designed this gag, where we've built an automated sentry gun. They can follow this cable up into the control box at the top there, where they'll find a, a server unit controlling the gun. They can hack into it, and then they instantly get a live feed through the gun's scope, and they can actually guide the gun, take over, and eliminate the target themselves. Boys, we're hacking in. Brute force it. I'm gonna brute force that thing. Oh, all right, I have access. That's him, no, That's him, no. that one, no, that's him, yeah. that's the one. Almost there. Fire! Liam's been playing our Agent 47. For those of you that are fans of level one and two, he's the famous hands. He's been wearing the helmet for both the other two levels. And he goes from happy, happy, smiley to train cold killer in an instant. So the voiceover in all of these real life games uh, is more than just a little bit of audio padding. It's actually um, the way that we react to the player, the way we create that relationship with the player, and the way that we shape the game and, and kind of guide it in the direction we want it to go. There's a guard approaching. You want me to take him out? IO Interactive were actually able to send David Bateson, who has always done 
the voice of 47 in all the games. Uh, well, what have we got here? Really great to have him here on set, doing live voiceover, to just add that level of authenticity and detail. Holy crap, that was good. That was realer than real. In fact, we also had a really lovely moment where David got to meet Liam, dressed as 47, right here on set. Don't I know you? Agent 47? I like your work. So the brains of the operation is the control room, as always, and we've really kind of spec that up for this one. We've got four machines in there running everything. So the first one is bringing in all those CCTV feeds so that we can see what's going on across the whole site. We've then got the dialogue PC, so 22 actors in the space besides 47, all wearing microphones, and then mix all their microphones all in real time. That then gets passed across to the main sound desk, which is where Ben's mixing together the voiceover from David Bateson and the music and the real-time effects, and then that all gets passed across to the streaming PC, which is receiving the incoming video stream, combining it with the sound, and then sending that out to the game sites. Okay, so that's the behind the scenes on the real life Hitman experience. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the main video. And uh, from me and the whole Realm Pictures team, uh, thank you for watching. And trust me when I say I cannot wait to show you what we have in store for you next.